Welcome back. I believe we're at video nine in the series. Um, thank you guys for all the awesome feedback in the last video. I've implemented a number of changes that I want to share with you. Then after that, let's do some more test sprints. And finally, a lot of people have been asking me about the cost to do this build, so I'll go over all that at the end. Let's go. First change, I'm tired of taking apart the recoder assembly after every test print to replace the worn silicone cord. So I've got some three millimeter stainless steel rod that I'm gonna try using instead. I won't need to worry about it melting anymore, but I'm not sure if its rigidness will be an issue, as sometimes the silicone cord was scraping across the printed part in earlier tests. One more thing I want to bring up, a number of you mentioned I should change the recoder to the reverse spinning roller type, which I totally agree and I think would be awesome. Um, it's a little more involved than I can get into right now with my life and workload. Um, so I'm going to put that on my things to do wish list along with um, chamber heaters. Next, you guys suggested to either sand or sandblast the build plate for better adhesion. So I'm going to try out my new sandblasting cabinet. The third change is the laser focus. Metal Matters, Metal Base, and Mr. Zing from JYM, all three pointed this out in the feedback. So I did some focus tests and found out that I'm 17 millimeters out of focus. That means I need to raise the scan head 17 millimeters higher. I had it positioned based on the specifications and never got around to actually testing and confirming this distance. Sometimes I make really stupid mistakes. So a huge thank you to you guys for pointing this out. If you haven't yet, check out the YouTube channels for both Metal Matters and Metal Base. They've been doing awesome work in the DIY metal 3D printer space and have been really inspirational in me attempting this project. I've taken off the roof and um, it looks like we have plenty of clearance here. I can raise it up 17 millimeters, no problem, still be inside the cabinet. Um, I think the easiest thing to do right now would be to just 3D print some spacer blocks that raise it up 17 millimeters and slide them underneath that bracket. Um, we can test it out. At some point I can machine some new ones out of aluminum. Um, so let's give that a try. I've got my 3D printed spacer block, so let me get those installed. You can see I've got it mounted on these spacers now. So I'm going to put this all back together and I'll do another engraving test and confirm that we are now in focus. I think we're much closer to being in focus now. I also wanted to respond to a really popular comment that my testing procedure is very inefficient and I totally agree. Um, I want to be doing multiple uh, pieces with different parameters at once. But I've dug around in this software everywhere I can think and I cannot find a way to actually assign different parameter types to different models. So I guess for now we just have to take the slow approach. Fusion has been working well so far for creating supports and slicing the model. So let's do another corner bracket test print. I'm just purging the oxygen and we're going to give this a shot again. What a difference that makes by having the laser in focus, who knew? Um, yeah, it looks like it's going pretty well so far. It seems like the recoder blade is still scraping slightly on the top, but uh, just barely. Um, but this is by far the best test I've ever had, so I'm just gonna let it run for a while and see what happens. All right, it's moved on from the raft and now it's doing the support columns. With how much better this is working, I can probably just get rid of that raft at this point. We've moved on past the support columns and now it's printing the actual part. We're on layer 90 of 460 and uh, still no drama. It's been 28 minutes and it looks like it's going to be an hour 40 minutes for this to finish. Everything's still looking good. Um, I just realized I forgot to fill my powder chamber so hopefully we don't run out before this is finished. We've made it halfway now. Um, I think I've misread this before. It's actually the total print job is an hour 40 minutes um, or an hour eight minutes in, so about a half an hour left. The recoder is still catching a little bit. Um, and I see a little bit of doming, so I imagine my laser power is uh, still quite a bit too high. Uh, we'll, we'll lower that for next sprint. I'm about 60 layers from being done and uh, it is looking way too hot at this point. Look at it glow. The recoder's really struggling to get over that hump. It's really bubbling up there from the heat. I didn't add any support structure under this wall, 
so it looks like it's having trouble dissipating the heat and causing it to warp. It's even catching on the way back when the bed is actually lower. Oh man, we were so close. I'm like 40 layers away and uh, finally got a servo error and it uh, disengaged the servo. All right, well, I guess that's the end of this test. Let's try to retrieve this part and get the build plate cleaned up. Wow, look at that. It actually does look like a corner bracket. The most expensive corner bracket in the world. I got this out of the build plate, so let's take a look. Um, it's really interesting to see how the different areas have uh, a different color. Uh, I, my guess is that that's from its ability to transfer the heat away. Um, and uh, also, you can see here at the top area, it's way darker, and that's where we failed. So my guess is that it was just getting too hot up there. Um, I wonder if I should be adding support material on the side here to help transfer the heat away um, for this. And I'm also wondering if overall I'm still just a little bit too hot. Um, this is my first test with a actually focus laser, so um, we're kind of starting from scratch again. But um, yeah, this looks promising. I was doing some more inspection and measuring this part. This is supposed to be 27.8 millimeters. It's about 24.2, 24.45. So it looks like I need to figure out how to do the lens correction uh, so we can get parts to actually come out to the correct size also. I did a little software calibration and got it so that um, everything is scaled properly. Um, so hopefully our parts will be the right size now. There still seems to be a little bit of lens distortion at larger sizes. And I'm not quite sure how to um, add in the correction file for that yet. I've been pleasure delaying, but I think it's time we open up these last two packages from PCBWay. Um, whenever I ordered all my parts from them before, I asked if they would send me a couple uh, 3D printed samples um, so I can get a good benchmark for what a quality 3D printed piece looks like. So I have a couple stainless steel parts here from them. Let's check it out and see what they look like. Oh wow, that is nice. We we definitely have a ways to go. Let's um open up the other one here. Wow, that is really cool. Let me take these over here into some better light so we can look at them better. Okay, first the corner bracket. Um, they're actually a little bit smoother than I was expecting. I wonder if these have been sandblasted because they kind of have this matte finish. I also had them print this cube. Um, this is a piece uh, that I machined out of aluminum um, on my CNC mill using the fourth axis. This is the 3D printed part. Again, the surface quality is just uh, really smooth. Very nice looking. All right, now we know what uh, we need to strive for. Ordering was simple, just go to the 3D printing services page, drag and drop your 3D model, choose the material, select the quantity, and request a price. My parts were about $25 each, which seems very reasonable considering I'm spending more money than that just on purging with argon gas for each of my test prints. So if you want, give it a try at PCBWay.com. I've got a new bottle of argon and we're going to start test number, I'm not even sure at this point. Um, I've also altered my settings a little bit. Um, I think I'm at 200 watts now, so let's uh, see what happens. I also set up a new print file thinking it probably makes more sense in this orientation so it doesn't need as much support material.
All right, we just finished. Took a little over three hours. Let's uh, take a look. I don't really have high hopes for this print. There was an area somewhere in the middle of the job where there was maybe 50 to 100 layers where all of a sudden there was a powder shortage and part of the piece wasn't getting covered. So there's probably gonna be a messed up area. I don't know if there was a void in my powder supply or what, but um, let's see what happens. That turned out a little bit better than I was expecting. Um, it doesn't look too bad. There's a little bit of deformation right here where I was telling you the powder was kind of low right there in the middle. If you can see that. But otherwise, I mean, the color definitely looks uh, much more even compared to my last attempt. And I just measured it. Here's an actual corner bracket. And it actually, it looks to scale. You can see, I think my support material was a little bit too thick. I'll have to see if I can remove that. It's kind of interesting how it's kind of got a different color than the rest of the part. But um, yeah, interesting. I think we're getting really close. Here you can see what my support structure looks like. It's definitely way too thick. This would be a huge pain to try to clean this up, so I'm not going to bother. So I think I will um, sandblast it real quick and see what kind of surface finish it looks like after that post-processing. Here's the part after I sandblasted it. Definitely has a much more consistent surface finish to it. Here it is next to the PCB Wayprint. Um, it, uh, mine looks a little bit shinier than theirs does. I noticed that and also my you know my layers aren't as consistent because of my my powder and spreading issues and here it is next to my first attempt we're definitely moving forward um i think now i want to try printing a part i actually need for an upcoming project so let's do that this is an assembly that will be going on a robot arm for an upcoming fun project and i want to try to print these two gripper arms i'll share more about this project in the near future Here's how I've set up the print file. I've just added a little bit of support material so I have room to cut them off and grind them down to length. We're getting ready to start the next test print. I think this one's gonna take much longer. Um, it's got over a thousand layers. It'll probably take seven hours, something like that. We're getting closer, it's been about four and a half hours. It's still looking good. Oh no, we're like on layer a thousand. It looks like something broke off. There's a huge chunk. Uh, everything was going smooth right before that. I think one side of it is okay, and then maybe the other one got broken off. We'll go ahead and let it finish. Looks like it took five hours and six minutes. I'm gonna let this cool down for a little bit and then we'll take a look and see what happened. This part looks like it turned out okay. You can see here where this piece broke off right there. It actually looks like on the one that survived, if you can see that, it was also starting to lift. Maybe there were some stresses um, from the temperature difference, but it managed to survive. So that's a real bummer. We were so close. I wonder if I can make this work with just one hole here. Hope to look into that. All right, well, let me get this part removed and cleaned up. I sanded off the support material and then gave them a quick sandblasting. That one will go there, that one will go there. I think that might even work just with that one hole right there. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, I think I'm definitely getting closer with the printing parameters. Um, I'm gonna keep testing those and get those dialed in. 
However, my recoder and powder delivery systems definitely need some work. I'm at this point where I need to decide do I want to keep trying to make these incremental improvements or have I learned enough during this process that I should go ahead and just redesign the whole printing chamber from scratch with everything that I've learned. I already have a long list of improvements I'd like to make, like a better recoder, um, a heated chamber, maybe even a vacuum system, and the list goes on and on. Um, so I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. What I do know is that working on this for the past nine months has left me pretty mentally exhausted and I don't want to get burnt out. So I think I probably should take a little break, make a few simple videos, let myself regroup and re-energize before making any major decisions on how I should proceed. Anyways, normally at this stage of the project, I would share my 3D models for everyone, but I just don't think it's ready yet. I know I can do better. So I think for now, I'll just put out the bill of materials. So if anybody wants to go down this path, they can see the different components I've used. Let me give you an idea of what this cost to build so far. For each of these categories, I'm just listing the most expensive components that make up the bulk of the cost. All the other items are included in the bill of materials, but I'm not fully listing them out here. So let me start by prefacing this with, I didn't necessarily always use the cheapest components for this build. There were a couple components in particular where quality was chosen over price such as the Fieldtech scan head. Between both mine and Skyfire's research, there were three different Galvos we were considering. We decided that the Fieldtech Galvo was the highest quality and had the best support. If I were to build this again, I would probably go with the air-cooled version of the fiber laser source. It's a little cheaper and you can also save money by not needing a chiller. All of these laser components can be sourced from Skyfire. For the frame and build chamber, we have the custom machined aluminum printing chamber parts from PCBWay, a bunch of 4040 extrusion, and some sheet metal for the body panels, and a bunch of corner brackets and hardware. For the motion system, as I mentioned in an earlier video, I just used some servo-driven actuators that I had on hand. They work okay, but after doing a few test prints, I can notice a slight Z-axis banding surface artifact that appears to coincide with a ball screw pitch. So if I were to do this again, I would probably build them from scratch with closed-loop stepper motors, ball screws, and linear guide rails to prevent this from happening. Another bonus from doing it that way is that I could add build platform heaters. With my current setup, it's basically impossible to add them because of the closed actuator design. Most of the cost for the electrical components comes from just the controller and the oxygen analyzer. For me, the gas recirculation system was the most shocking part of the build. I didn't really know much about these systems, so I wanted to use a proper high quality gas tight regenerative blower. Becker initially quoted me almost 8,000 for the small unit that I'm using. After some back and forth, I got it down to a little over 4K, but man, I had no idea how expensive these units were. I still wonder if there's a way to use a much cheaper blower and seal it up to be gas tight for a fraction of the cost. That brings my total cost so far to around $23,320. I know that sounds like a lot, but that's actually quite low when compared to the cost of commercial machines. I'm not rich and this project has only been possible thanks to the generous support of Skyfire, PCBWay, and my Patreon supporters. Hopefully the prices will keep dropping and we'll see some affordable metal printers hit the market in the next couple years. That was what happened when I built my first DIY fiber laser cutting machine. A couple years later, now there are three or four affordable machines on the market. I also wanted to add that the costs don't end there. I've got about $400 into post-processing equipment, um, sandblasting cabinet, sieves, containers, etc. And I also found out that metal powder is expensive. $550 for that 10 kilogram container that I'm using. And the gas isn't cheap either. If I were to do a full chamber height print, it would easily consume half my argon tank. Anyhow, I'll share the full breakdown of the components I used in the bill of materials on my Patreon page if anyone is interested and wants more detail. All right, I think that will pretty much wrap up this video series for now while I do some more test printing and figure out how I wanna proceed with future upgrades. Um, please leave me your feedback in the comments and let me know how you think I should proceed. I want to give a huge thank you to Skyfire for sponsoring all the laser components for the project. A huge thank you to PCB Way for sponsoring all the machined aluminum parts for the build chamber. And thank you to all my Patreon supporters for making all this possible. Thank you guys. Mm -hmm.